If you're a Texas landowner and you're interested in improving the quality of the genetics on your ranch, you can contact me at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Hey everybody, welcome to the show and to Folsom, Louisiana, where today we're at Boom Whitetails. Like most deer farms, this is a family-run operation, and on today's show, we'll introduce you to the family. And although Boom Whitetails has not been in the deer farming business very long, they are very profitable. To be a deer farmer doesn't mean you have to have a lot of property. You can start with as little as one acre. Build you a pen, put you a couple of deer in there, have a couple of babies, and in two years, you can turn around and sell those. What you're seeing on today's show is, uh, is beautiful. This place is beautiful. The deer are beautiful and the farm is beautiful, but the people are beautiful. It would not be possible without uh, Lance. Lance is a, a special type of person. Uh, I can't imagine being in uh, this family's shoes. Uh, Lance had an accident years ago and it left him to the point that uh, he hadn't been able to really participate in anything except he can sit back and enjoy. He can watch what's going on on this farm and it brings him joy. And for me, it uh, kind of chokes me up to realize that uh, I couldn't imagine being in Lance's position or I couldn't imagine being in this family's position. But the cool thing about it is the white-tailed deer are magical animals. They do something within people's hearts and uh, they bring a lot of joy to a lot of people. Lance is my son and 31 years ago, he was injured at work. He absorbed toxic chemicals and it left him mentally and physically challenged and it's really been a hard time for us and him and I guess you say a fluke when we came across something that we thought that he would be able to enjoy. He was on a hunt and he was able to kill a deer and the people that own the property we sat and talked to them and then we came home and we kind of just threw everything out there and decided it's something that we could all do and something that he would enjoy and something that my grandsons would be able to enjoy and grow up learning and hopefully be able to pass it on. Lance and Nico are a true blessing. Um, they were our little miracles in a way and um, they love being out here on the farm. They love growing up out here. They love having their friends, their um, relatives come out, stay with them. They love being a part of what goes on during the summer. When they're not in school, they work. They, um, they're on the lawnmower, they're on the weed eater, they're helping feed the deer during fawning season, they're helping tag deer. Um, when it comes to bottle raising, if it, if it turns out that, that we have to pull one out and bottle feed it, then they're on top of that and that's um, that's just part of the responsibility that they have of being in this family and being part of the deer farm. The boys, well the boys are uh, they're knuckleheads, what can I say? <laughs> they're my friends. He got Lance and Nicholas and uh, they're twins and uh, years ago when I came out here I mean they're always smiling. Uh, now Lance he's a little bit more serious than Nicholas. Lance is like the the CEO of the bunch you know but Nicholas 
he's always in for a good time. So when I hang around with these guys, whether it's here on the deer farm or whether it's eating crawfish, I always enjoy it. And I look at them, I tell people that at this point, you know, the, the boys are really cute. And they're, they're, they're fun to be around. In about another couple of years, you'll, you'll want to kill them. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. Well, originally when we got started, we had to, you know, everybody wants to bottle feed, and we did that for the first couple of years. And that got to be a lot of work. And I don't have enough staff here to, to keep up with that, so we quit doing that, and we let the moms take care of them. That seems to work a whole lot better. And Lance, my son Lance, was begging, wanting a buck. He wanted to raise a buck this year. He wanted to bottle feed one. And I kept saying, no, 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 no. Well, <clears throat> God fixed it where he had got, he got to raise one. We had a mom that rejected a little buck fawn. And I had too much in him to just let him sit out there and wait on her. So we went and got him and, and that became Lance's responsibility. He stayed with it all summer long. And uh, he did a good job. The buck is fine, he's big, he's healthy. And uh, today's his last bottle. You know, when the boys are around early in the morning before they go to school, they visit the pens, they check on the deer, and they do their morning chores. The boys growing up here, um, they're having to learn responsibility. They're just things that you have to do as part of a family. And um, being part of the deer farm, getting up, feeding babies, uh, put feet out, those sorts of things, that's just part of it and we're hoping to instill a good work ethic for them. We're hoping that at some point they'll branch out from working for the family to going to work for somebody else. You have done one heck of a job, man. I mean, Thank look you. at them. Thank you. You know, I remember two years ago I was out here and I was talking to you about, because the deer were pretty then, but they're bigger now. They're still beautiful, but they're bigger. and. You were telling me that you were focusing on, on really Texas-style genetics because that's what your market was really after. Tell everybody about that. I mean, look at these deer, folks. They're beautiful, um, and they're consistent. The bloodline is consistent with giving us clean two-year-old typical bucks. Uh, and that's Texas. the market you're after, right? That's the market we're after. We can get it a class, 150 class to 170 class buck at two-year-old, clean, might have a kicker here or there, but they love it. And I, I get calls all the time. These are all sold. The guy that bought these wants all my yearlings. Well, and it's easy to see why. I mean, when you start looking at deer like this, you know, on our show, I mean, we travel all over from north to south and east to west, and we see a lot of deer. But the industry is going now more typical than ever before. Yes, and, sir. And so how is business here in Louisiana? Um, I can't speak for everybody, but it's been good for me. I, we changed the rules here in Louisiana on getting started in a hunt preserve, and that really made my business good because now you have a lot of new ones opening up, and they need to stock them. And see, they're stocking these deer like this. They're not going to take these deer and just buy them and put them in there and kill them. That's not going to happen. They want to grow these deer up. They want these deer to breed. They exactly. want this type of genetic. You know, there's people that have got deer that are that are going to score better than these deer. But in reality, the hunter, that's what they want. That's the big, it. clean, typical genetics. This guy bought them at two years old. He has no plans to hunt them this year. He's going to turn them loose, let them breed the does that are in there. Well, I want to point something out, too. You know, you may be thinking about why would somebody want to do that? Why would somebody want to uh, buy deer like this and then introduce new genetics? And I want to talk about that simply because when, when you think about hunting, uh, hunters uh, being humans, you, you're going to want to shoot the biggest thing you can shoot. And in reality, you're shooting the best genetics out. Hunters shoot the biggest out every year, leaving the inferior genetics to do the breeding. And that's where deer farming comes in. That's where boom whitetails comes in because they can help you. If you've got a place in Louisiana and you're looking to stock your place with great typical genetics, F.J. Caminita has got a contact. Give them a telephone number. It's 985-373-1706. That's my cell number. 
and give them a call. You know, it is right now, it's the first week of September. The deer just about done growing. I mean, these guys right here, they look great, just about done growing. The uh, the does, you're fixing to sort uh, some fawns off their mamas right now, aren't That's you? That's correct. We, we did some this morning, and later in the week, we'll start pulling a few more in and taking the fawns off, wean them, and uh, start getting ready for the next round of breeding. Let's go see some yearlings. All right. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. All right, here we've got one-year-olds, right? Yes, sir. They're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I, I really, I mean, I'm looking at, that they all have got pretty shape to them. I yes, mean, sir. nice, typical look. Nice, typical look, clean. Uh, they surprised me because, as you and I talked, my AI didn't go so well. And most of these deer were born really late in the year. Mm -hmm. And for them to turn out looking like they did is, I, I'm like way more than happy about that. Well, you ought to be way more than happy. I mean, these deer, I would assume if these, if most of these are not AI babies then, because AI did not go well for you. That's correct. Uh, then they're live cover and they're probably out of Pablo too, huh? Every one of them. Really? Every one of them. Well, Pablo II, we're going to show you Pablo II here in a little bit. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a legend, especially over here in Louisiana. He is a legend, and he is clearly getting the job done, and he throws pretty deer. That, that's the deal. And uh, as we look at these bucks, I, I'm going to point something out. You, when you look at deer like this, and you look at deer like the two-year-olds that we showed you just a little bit ago, there is a market that will not quit here in Louisiana for deer like that. Am I right? That, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the market will not quit. There are people that are literally lined up. FJ could sell every single deer on the farm tomorrow. Tomorrow. I mean, so is business good? Business is good. Business, no, your business is great. Business okay. is great. <laughs> it's great. The deer business is absolutely over the top here in Louisiana. And so what I want to encourage people, if you're from Louisiana, and you're interested in deer farming, okay? It's a very lucrative business and it's fun. It's great for the family. Yep. It's something if you've, uh, say if you've had cattle on your piece of property, Tiny said she's had cattle here. We've we had cattle. Okay, and so if you, you know, cattle people can make a whole lot of money, uh, you know, a whole lot easier, in my opinion, uh, by raising whitetail deer. If somebody wants more information on coming out here to boom whitetails, it's only about 50 miles north of New Orleans. Give them a phone number. 985-373-1706. Or they can go to www.boomwhitetails.com. And, and what you're gonna find is you're gonna find when you come out here, you're gonna find big, spacious buck pens. Why are they so big? Well, we had an issue with some overcrowding in the smaller pens. And last year, we had some yearlings that broke some antlers. So when the pond drained, that gave us an opportunity to close in all this property and put the bucks out here. They have lots of room. They're not in each other's way. They, and and they, they're more relaxed. They're not stressed. And it's, it's just been a much better situation for them. Well, stress. and I can tell the stress level on the deer. These deer, they're healthy. They're, they're fed well. I know you're feeding record rack. Yes, sir. And uh, they're fed well, and they are in good shape. I mean, that little guy right there, he's a 10-pointer. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at him. That is a beautiful 10-point buck. Yep. And there is no telling what he's going to grow into next year. Every one of these deer, they're a Pablo II buck. Every one of them has the potential to really outdo their daddy. Yes. And that's the truth. Every one of them. Okay, and so any one of them that you're looking at in this pen could be the next big one. So I don't know, if I was a bet man, I'd say, I'm not gonna bet. <laughs> no, not either. That's why, that's why I wouldn't sell them to that guy. I wanna see what they're gonna do. Hell of a job. Thank you, sir. Hell of a job. Appreciate I'm proud it. of you. Yes, FJ has not been breeding deer very long. Tell him how many years. Uh, four years. Four years. And look what he's got. And it's brought the family a little bit closer together too, hasn't it? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And the Absolutely. boys, when I was here last time, they were this big, now they're this big. Yeah. And they're still knuckleheads. Still knuckleheads <laughs> and eating a whole lot more than they did <laughs> yeah, back then. They <laughs> yep. Yep. And you call them the cowboys. The cowboys. If you remember the John Wayne movie, The Cowboys, he couldn't get, he, all he could get to help drive his cattle were kids. And they learned a lot on that drive, those kids. These kids are learning a lot here. You doggone right they are. And, and that's my little cowboys, and I'm proud of them. They, I'm proud they of do, them too. They do a fine job here. If you're in Texas and interested in becoming a deer farmer, 
you can contact me for deer farming franchise opportunities right here in Texas at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. FJ is retired from his previous occupation, but that doesn't mean that he's quit working at all. I'm a retired emergency room nurse. <clears throat> I did that for 12, 13 years. And in the emergency room, it's blowing and going all the time. You start something and you have to finish it yesterday because that's the pace in the ER. Deer farming's a whole lot slower pace. You have to have a lot of patience and patience was never one of my virtues. And God helps me with that a lot here on this deer farm <laughs> because you have to have patience with everything you do. You can't rush the deer. You'll notice the pens are big. I mean, much bigger than lots of places that we go to. And uh, I asked FJ, I said, what is his rationale? Why does he want those pens so big, especially for the bucks? We found that having the bucks in the smaller pens was too much of a stress. They, they, they didn't like it. And they'd run into the fence, they'd break antlers. We now put the bucks in the much larger pens and there's a lot less stress on them. They're a lot more relaxed. They have a lot of room to get around and get away from you. And it just makes a better growing environment for the bucks. All right, well, there's no doubt in my mind which one is Pablo too. <laughs> I mean, look at him. And how old is he now? He's eight years old now. So how long has he been on the farm? He's been here three years. So you really started, he was your initial breeder buck out here, wasn't he? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I remember coming out here a couple of years ago and look at him, you can tell he's bashful down there. I mean, he doesn't like the camera at all. No, no, he, he doesn't like, he's not sociable. I mean, <laughs> look at him down there. I mean, he, he's like, he looking at us. He, come on, give us a move now. That's it. But I mean, he's pretty, he's clean. Tell us about his pedigree. He is, uh, his daddy is full blood Texas, the original Pablo. And on the bottom side is silver storm over a Texas doe made of blue one doe. So it's Pablo over blue one, and we have Pablo two who is three quarter Texas. Okay, and uh, clearly three quarter Texas doing well out here in Louisiana. Oh, absolutely, they, they, they do real well. Okay, well he's not alone in this pen. Tell me who the other one is. The other one is Booms TNT. He was here when I was here last time. He was a baby. He was a yearling when you came last yeah. time. Yeah. That's right. Well, look at him. Now, he's kind of got some non-typical stuff going on. What's going on with that? Because <laughs> out of every deer we've looked at, FJ, they've been clean and pretty. And not that he's not clean and pretty. He's it's a, just he's got a, got a little stuff going on. What's going on with that? He's a line-bred black eagle. That's and, why. And that's why. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm using him as a cover buck. Mm -hmm. And then... The guy that wanted the two-year-old, that bought the two-year-olds, yep. is also buying him next year. He can't. He couldn't say no. Could he, he couldn't say no to him. <laughs> Can you tell I, why? I, I'm gonna look at him. I made He's him big. a real good deal, and he He's couldn't big. say no. Okay, talk about these deer as far as their pedigrees. Are they all in the North American Deer Registry? Yes, sir. Every one of them. So if somebody's gonna buy a deer from you, you can guarantee 100%. They're in the North American Deer Registry and what the pedigree is. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. And so as you can see, I mean, Pablo too is, uh, he's just as big now as he was two years ago. Yeah. And just as big of a knucklehead, he doesn't want to come up and <laughs> I mean, he, he's going to be down there like that, but that's okay. We can see him really good. But I remember when I was here two years ago, he wouldn't give us a good shot of him either. No, no, he, he gets to doing his little 360s and it's time to go. Yeah, you know, <laughs> here's the deal. Every deer has their own personality. I mean, you think about that, just like us, people have personality. I mean, Lance has got his personality, you know, Nico's got his personality, oh, we've yeah. got our own personality, and so does every single deer in the pens. And so when you're a deer farmer, you get to learn your deer's personalities every day you're out here. All Loving right, so minute. if somebody wants more information on Boom Whitetails, give them a phone number. 985-373-1706, or they can go to www.boomwhitetails.com. Put her there. Yes, sir. Folks, if you have any questions or comments about the show, we'd love to hear from you. If you're watching online, just go ahead and enter your questions down below, and I promise you I'll get back with you. If you're not watching online, I want to let you know that if you go to our website, you can watch our programs 24-7 right there. And let us hear from you. I'm Keith Warren, and you've been watching Deer and Wildlife Stories. Top water or worm? Top water, huh? Yeah. Um, um, Me too. Um, 
top water. Top water gets it every time. I mean, I'll catch them on a worm, but I'd rather catch them on top. Huh? Oh, yeah.